Primary biliary cholangitis is a rare autoimmune disease predominantly affecting women. The elevated alkaline phosphatase and gamma glutamyl transferase are the first biochemical signs, while bilirubin increased with advanced diseases. The only approved treatment for patients with primary biliary cholangitis is the ursodoxycholic acid, which improves liver biochemistry and delays the time to liver transplantation. Ursodoxycholic acid treatment improves long-term survival, but it is not effective in all patients. Identification of patients with an inadequate response to the UDCA therapy is a key for the indication of second-line therapy. The aim of our study was to find predictors of the therapeutic response to the UDCA treatment after 6 and 12 months. It is a retrospective analysis of patients with primary biliary cholangitis treated with UDCA between 1990 and 2017 in the first department of internal medicine University Hospital Košice and department of internal medicine Hospital Poprad, Slovakia. The diagnosis of primary biliary cholangitis was based on two of three criteria, elevation alkaline phosphatase lasted then for uh, six months, elevation of antimitochondrial antibody or liver biopsy, liver biopsy consistent with diagnosis of primary biliary cholangitis. We planned to enroll 173 patients, but 51 patients were treated with UDCA before sending to outpatients hepatology clinic. 11 patients had insufficient data for statistical analysis by first examination. Seven patients didn't fulfill criteria for primary biliary cholangitis. 15 patients have not yet been controlled after six months of treatment. We enrolled 89 patients. These patients were enrolled into statistical analysis. 88 were women. The mean age was 55 plus minus 10 years, and eight patients used corticosteroids, four due to overlap with autoimmune hepatitis. We tried to find uh, the, the criteria for the therapeutic response to the UDCA. Uh, totally 89 patients were evaluated. The therapeutic response to the UDCA treatment was defined as alkaline phosphatase level of less than 1.67 times of the upper limit of the normal range after six months of treatment. 58 patients achieved the therapeutic response to the UDCA treatment after six months. It was 65% of patients. Here we tried to find the predictors of the therapeutic response to the UDCA after six months of treatment. You can see that conjugated bilirubin ALT, AST, and ALP were predictors of the therapeutic response to the UDCA treatment after six months of treatment. The dose of UDCA, CRP, cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, ADL cholesterol, triglyceride, fasting glucose, ferritin levels, platelet counts, neutrophil lymphocytes ratio did not predict the therapeutic response to the UDCA after six months of treatment. On the next step, we try to find the criteria, the predictors of therapeutic response to the UDCA after 12 months of the therapy. Totally 78 patients were evaluated. The therapeutic response to the UDCA treatment after 12 months of treatment were defined by the same criteria that the therapeutic response to the UDCA treatment after six months of the treatment. 55 patients achieved the therapeutic response to the UDCA treatment after 12 months. It was 70%. Total bilirubin, conjugated bilirubin, and alkaline phosphatase were predictors, predictors of the therapeutic response to the UDCA after 12 months of treatment. 
the dose of the UDCA, CRP, cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, ADL cholesterol, triglyceride, fasting glucose, ferritin levels, platelet counts, neutrophile lymph lymphocytes ratio, didn't predict the therapeutic response to the UDCA after 12 months of treatment. 88% of patients who achieved the therapeutic response to the UDCA after six months of therapy maintained it after 12 months of therapy. Achieving of therapeutic response to the UDCA after six months uh, of treatment is a strong predictor to achieve a therapeutic response after 12 months of treatment. We divided our patients into two groups. The first group were the patients with baseline alkaline phosphatase of less than two times of the upper limit of the normal range. These patients are with red color. And the second group were the patients with alkaline phosphatase baseline above two times of the upper limit of the normal range. These patients uh, were in, in green color. Uh, you can see that uh, after six months uh, of the treatment with the UDCA achieved the therapeutic uh, response, 81% of the patients with the alkaline phosphatase of less than two times of the upper limit of the normal range, but only 46% of the patients with the alkaline phosphatase baseline above two times of the upper limit of the normal range. The difference was significant. After 12 months of the treatment, the response to the UDCA treatment achieved 78% of the patients with baseline alkaline phosphatase of less than two times of the upper limit of the normal range, and 62% of the patients with baseline alkaline phosphatase above two times of the upper limit of the normal range. The difference was not significant. Uh, so we can say that the, therapeut the response to the UDCA treatment in the group of the patients with alkaline phosphatase baseline of less than two times of the upper limit of the normal range is similar after six and after 12 months of the treatment. But the response of the UDCA treatment in the group of the patients with baseline alkaline phosphatase above two times of the upper limit of the normal range after six months and after 12 months is different. The response to the UDCA treatment in this group after 12 months increased by 16% compared to month six. These patients with higher alkaline phosphatase at baseline need more time to achieve the therapeutic response to the EDCA. During follow-up occurred 15 patients the decompensation of liver diseases. In five patients, control examination after six months wasn't performed due to rapid disease progression. Ten patients were enrolled in the statistical analysis. Eight of ten patients didn't achieve the therapeutic response to the UDCA treatment after six months. Seven of nine patients didn't achieve the therapeutic response to the UDCA treatment after 12 months. Two patients achieved the therapeutic response to the, to the UDC treatment after six and 12 months but one patient had overlap with autoimmune hepatitis and one patient had celiac diseases. Patients who didn't achieve a therapeutic response to the UDCA after six months of treatment had a significantly higher probability of liver diseases decompensation compared to those who have achieved a therapeutic response after six months of the ratio approximately 10. Patients who didn't achieve a therapeutic response to the UDCA after 12 months of treatment had a significantly higher probability of liver diseases decompensation compared to those who have achieved a therapeutic response after 12 months, odds ratio approximately 12. 
On the next slide, you can see the definition of treatment failure. The first column are the work group. The second column are the time of uh, the treatment with the UDCA in months, when the uh, therapeutic response was evaluated. And uh, on the third column, you can see the definition of non-response of uh, treatment. We used Toronto criteria. The definition of treatment failure was alkaline phosphatase above 1.67 times of the upper limit of the normal range. Uh, Chinese authors thought that the biochemical response to the UDCA treatment after six months has a comparable predictive value to the biochemical response after 12 months. In our research, 88% of patients who achieved the therapeutic response to UDCA after six months of therapy maintained it after 12 months of treatment. Here is the GLOBE risk score. This score divided the patients into two groups, high risk and low risk, to liver decompensation, to death and to liver transplantation after one year of the treatment with UDCA and using the criteria um, with age and other biochemical markers. The potential second-line therapy for PBC patients is obeticolic acid. Here are the results of the Nuance POAS study. In this study, obeticolic acid significantly decreases alkaline phosphatase level in non-responders to the UDCA treatment with primary biliary cholangitis. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude. Baseline conjugated bilirubin and alkaline phosphatase level predicted a therapeutic response to the UDCA treatment after 6 and 12 months. Baseline AST and ALT levels predicted a therapeutic response to the UDCA treatment after 6 months. Baseline total bilirubin levels predicted a therapeutic response to the UDCA treatment after 12 months. Achieving a therapeutic response to the UDCA after six months of treatment is a strong predictor to achieve a therapeutic response after 12 months of treatment. Patients with baseline alkaline phosphatase of less than two times of the upper limit of the normal range had a significantly higher probability of achieving a therapeutic response after six months of UDCA treatment, but not after 12 months of treatment compared to patients with baseline alkaline phosphatase above two times of the upper limit of the normal range. Liver disease is the compensation occurred only in patients who didn't achieve a therapeutic response after 6 and 12 months of UDCA treatment or had other associated diseases, celiac diseases, overlap with autoimmune hepatitis. Patients who didn't achieve a therapeutic response to the UDCA after 6 or 12 months of UDCA treatment had a significantly higher probability of liver diseases decompensation in the future. Thank you for your attention. Very nice talk. Thank you very much. And congratulations on the excellent results. It's a nice study. It's open for, for discussion. Yeah, please. Is this a question? No, no. A very good study, and uh, I have the methodological question. Uh, in your study, you, the, the risk factors uh, were analyzed and detected in the univariate analysis. Have you done or tried the multivariate analysis to find a one of those, the formal, formal statistical analysis? Uh, thank you for your, for your answer. I, uh, I don't uh, tell you because the statistical analysis were performed with our colleague, uh, Professor Janicko, but I would like to help Professor Jarczuszka uh, to help me with the answer. The microphone is here. The microphone. Yeah. You perform only univariate analysis, but it's a good idea to perform also multivariate analysis. 
do you believe, Sylvia, that uh, UCDCA has impact not only in the biochemical response, also in the uh, development of complications, the liver failure and portal hypertension, isn't it, yeah? Yes, uh, I think that uh, UDCA, UDCA improves not only biochemical uh, parameters, UDCA improves the survival of the patients. Thanks. In the next, yeah, please. The higher baseline bilirubin level, a high activity of alkaline phosphatase was the determinant of uh, worse uh, response to UDCA. That suggests that those patients, uh, in those patients, the liver disease was more severe. In how many patients did you make bi biopsy? And uh, could, you, uh, could you introduce histopathological uh, features to your predictive statistics? In, uh, thank, you for the, uh, thank you for the question. In uh, our study, approximately 20% uh, had uh, performed the biopsy. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't use uh, these parameters uh, um, uh, evaluate uh, um, as a predictors. The next comment or question? Yeah, no, nothing more. Thanks a lot.